and I know as a single parent, one of the things is, is my child is me and I am my child and, and we are a package thing together. And yes, that is true. Yet you are also you and your partner needs to get to know you. And so, yes, there's a time to introduce and there's a time to have conversations about your children, but there's also a time that's like, this is a part of us, but it's not, it's, you need to get to know me. Right. And you need to know my heart, my goals, the things that, that are important to me. What's up, fam? Welcome back to our channel. My name is Tim. This is my beautiful wife, Pauline, and you are tuning in to another episode of the W Podcast, where you get wisdom in the world with the Wheeler. Hey, so we are so excited this week. We're actually talking about a topic we have never touched on before. What does it look like to date somebody that has kids? What does it look like to have a blended family? How do you do that successfully? And we're excited because we're not doing this alone. We have some amazing guests with us today. I am so excited. We have the authors of Blended and Redeemed. This book is all about the guide to the modern step family. How do you do it successfully? And they also have their own channel. Yes, their own podcast called Blended Kingdom Family. So we want to welcome to the W Podcast for the first time, Scott and Vanessa Martindale. Absolutely. Welcome. Great to be here. Hey, thank y'all so much for having us, W fam. We're excited. <laughs> <laughs> We're so excited to have you guys on today. Um, a lot of y'all listening, even if you've never been married before, we know that a lot of you all have questions about how to date um, in a way that will lead to a healthy marriage because marriage is hard, life is hard, dating is hard. And then it does get, of course, um, very it gets more complicated when there are children involved or there's co-parents involved and we want you guys to know number one that god cares about that that he does not you know only make cookie cutter marriages for people who've been married for the first time without children but he does help everybody in every single situation i think that what you all are doing at blended kidding families um really embodies that so we're really excited for um for you all to touch on that today. absolutely so let's jump right in because we got a a lot of questions and I know the people are ready to hear. So can you just tell us a little bit about yourselves, your dating story? How did you all meet and just kind of go from there? You want to share our background? Well, yeah. So, and yeah, the story is, is fun. So we've been married <laughs> almost 10 years. Uh, I am a licensed professional counselor. Vanessa is a nurse and also in her master's in marriage and family therapy. Uh, but we met on, uh, about 10 and a half years ago. Yeah. So we did not date very long mm -hmm. uh, because of, uh, well, I don't know why we didn't date very long. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we don't, yeah, it was like less than a year. Yeah, we, we, we got engaged yeah. and four months later we were married. Yeah, so, so we, it happened we, really fast. We did not uh, we weren't messing date, around. And we were not messing around. <laughs> we were getting after that. But uh, yeah, we met uh, by mutual friends. Uh, uniquely, we had the same group of friends, but uh, and had them for a long time, but never met uh, until one evening. I was living in California. She was living in Texas. I happened to be visiting one night and just happened to meet each other. Um, but yeah, and Vanessa was married previously. She had a son from that marriage. I was what I call a professional single. Uh, that means <laughs> I was 36 years old. When I met Vanessa, just to kind of get a context here, uh, when I met Vanessa, I was living in uh, like a 400 square foot studio apartment about 10 steps from the sand uh, in the beach in Santa Monica with just my dog. Wow. Um, <laughs> well, I literally was professionally single. I had done that uh, to the best of my ability. And so Vanessa and I met and literally were married, dating married within that year. And then immediately following marriage had three more sons. So now every year we after. have, yeah. We have four sons total. Yeah. So we have what we call a testoster home. Yep. Wow. Um, <laughs> That's a lot of boys. It's a lot of boys and they range from ages. We have, my oldest is 16 and then together we have a eight, seven and six. Yeah. Um, but it's a lot of fun and we love football and hmm. we do this side hustle gig ministry thing that we absolutely love called blending kingdom families. And we started that about 
three, three years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Um, and that really birthed out of a season of just of our own broken and messiness mm -hmm. with a co-parenting situation. And um, God really just took that season and turned it into something good and turned it into this ministry where we get to uh, minister to step families and people who are uh, who've gone through divorce or remarriage, or maybe they've lost a spouse and they're trying to get married, you know, mm -hmm. they're getting married again and going through that or even dating. And so um, it's an honor. We love getting to serve the community and um, just get to be the hands and feet of Jesus. So we're excited to be here today, you guys. Yeah, no, that's great. And I'm a product of a divorce home myself. Uh, so I came up with stepmom, stepdad on both sides. Yeah. Weirdly mm -hmm. enough, my parents actually got remarried the same year. <laughs> You've heard so, of it. That's a lot of people that happens. Yeah. yeah. So I have a perspective of it from the child situation, but I'm excited to have you all from the perspective of the couple actually walking it through it. So a mm -hmm. lot of these questions we have today are some variation of questions that our listeners have sent us in the past since we've been doing this. Just so you have an idea of what we're about to say. The first question I want to get into is usually some people will ask us, when's the best time to introduce kids? I may have a son, I have a daughter. Mm -hmm. When is the best time for me to introduce them to my children? Mm. Yeah, we just, um, so we have a podcast series out this month called Beginning to Blend. And this was actually our podcast that came out today. So you can go check that out too. Yes, but we get asked that question a lot. And I would just say, and Scott, you can speak into this too. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would say that, you know, I think every situation is different. You know, your children may be babies. They may be toddlers. They may be teenagers. You may be blending and you have adult children. Mm -hmm. So I think everyone's situation is different. The amount of children that you have, maybe what your um, past experience was, I think a lot of that plays into mm -hmm. it. Um, I think to answer the question, you know, it, I think it's, it's a lot of prayer and just discernment, um, speaking out of our experience, mm -hmm. you know, um, I grew up in a blended family as well as so did Scott. So I think about what my parents did, my mom and my stepdad did, and then I look at what we did and it's a little bit similar. Um, but for Scott and I, you know, I knew I had to be in a season of wholeness as a single person myself. Mm -hmm. I was a single mom for almost six years and I had to walk through a lot of freedom. I had to walk through a lot of healing, um, just repentance on, you know, on my part of the things that I had done to in that marriage. And I really needed to be in a season of just wholeness, mm -hmm. um, before I even thought about, um, you know, taking that step. And so, um, you know, when Scott and I met and got together, he knew about my son from the very beginning. Um, but we didn't even have a conversation about him even meeting Michael, I mean, a good month or six weeks into it, um, mm -hmm. just because we wanted to get to a place of, of mutual understanding. I wanted to know his true intentions. I wanted to know his heart. I wanted to make sure that our values, our morals, and the things that I valued in a spouse and mm -hmm. a future stepfather to Michael, all of that was, was going to be there. Um, and so for us, it was a process of getting to know one, one another, getting to know, um, how each other ticked, our thoughts, um, our relationship with the Lord, um, and coming together and, and really getting our view of what we wanted marriage to look like and what we wanted a future relationship to look at. I think we knew very quickly that we wanted, we were in it for marriage. Like, I was like, I ain't messing around. Look, this yeah. is my plan. I've been single. I got a kid, you know, I'm going this way. If you want to come along, this, this is what's going to happen. No, yeah. It wasn't quite like that, but we, um, <laughs> we very much, um, yeah, we, we, we decided that early on. And so our, you know, our, our intentions were um, very clear from the beginning. Yeah, I think, I, I think she decided that very early on. Um, <laughs> I needed to get in line. Um, that story's kind of funny. Um, I, I think that, that you're absolutely right. I, I, I want to speak to one other side of this, because I, I know, you know, a lot of your audience, they're, they're in the dating yeah. And, you know, uniquely, you know, we didn't meet in, in probably the most traditional way today, because mm -hmm. today a lot of people meet online. Yeah. Online dating is such a huge component. And I know your listeners are like, you know, I'm online and I'm kind of and I'm interacting a lot. So, you know, at what point do I just kind of put, you know, kind of all the food on the table and be sure. like, here's everything. Uh, and I just want to encourage, you know, there's a there's a process by which you you want to get to know somebody. And I know as a single parent, one of the things is, is my child is me. And I am my child and, and we are a package thing together. And yes, that is true. Yet you are also you and right. your partner needs to get to know you. And so, yes, there's a time to introduce and there's a time to have conversations about your children. But there's also a time that's like this is a part of us, but it's not it's you need to get to know me. 
Right. And you need to feel my heart, my goals, the things that, that are important to me, because not every dating relationship turns into marriage. Sure. And so we want to make sure that you're doing that in a healthy way, but you're also dating as you. And then when the timing is right, and I think when, when the intentions are correct and when the relationship is matured, then you can start by first having conversations about your children and having conversations about maybe your experience before and how that came about. And then after that, start thinking about the introduction yeah. and maybe what that looks like. I love that. I'm so glad you added that context because I think it's important. Now, I know you all said there wasn't any introduction or talks of it until a month or six weeks in. Mm -hmm. From day one, did you know that Vanessa had a child or what did that look like? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, that was clear from like, I think the first like five minutes of our conversation. Okay. And, I, and I think, you know, I was 36 at the time. So I think there's an expectation when you're 36 yeah. uh, that, you know, whoever you're talking to, there's a there's a fairly good chance that they have a child. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I think I'd learned that through just my own experience. So it wasn't surprising to me. And, I, and, and obviously, and the things that I looked for, you know, I know that she was talking about the, the concept of being whole. I was also looking for that as context as, as I knew when I knew Vanessa had a son, my next thought process is, okay, are, how are you in this? Because yeah. if you are, you know, still very young in those wounds or, you know, that's still very fresh. I mean, that may not be the healthiest situation to go into. So her process of becoming who she was over those six years of being a single mom were incredibly important to the development of our relationship and how it developed. If that had not happened, it would not have developed the way it did. Yeah. yeah. I love that because I think it's so easy for, especially depending on what the parent has gone through. Mm -hmm. Like, of course, parents are very protective and should be protective of their children. And a lot of people think like, oh, well, I want to date, but I don't know how to integrate my child into this mm -hmm. process if I should at all. And like what that kind of looks like with Scott, I love that you said like, yeah, okay, your kid is involved in your life, but there may not be involved in your dating life and a practical thing, you know, people can take away is like, talk about your kid. Like you don't need to hide them, but that doesn't mean they're coming mm -hmm. on the dates with you, <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. They're not yeah. like, you know, and, and maybe <laughs> I know Tim's story was kind of like, you know, and he was a little bit older, um, you know having some type of day dates or like a cookout or something where mm -hmm. it makes sense. But if you're going to the movies and dinner, you know, at eight o'clock mm -hmm. at night, like your kid, like let you need to get to know each other as a couple or as individuals mm -hmm. before you even saying, I want you to meet my child. And then the child gets yeah. attached and then it gets kind of like messy. So you're saying the first date shouldn't be a Chuck E. Cheese. Right. <laughs> I mean, not mm -hmm. intentionally, but also at maybe, yeah. I don't know. It's like, I think like what Vanessa is saying, it's, it's very, situational because for them they had there was one child involved but if scott had a child and they were the same age and what if they met at soccer and then you know yeah. it could be all a yeah. whole thing <laughs> no i love that and that's why we have this podcast because dating in general is nuanced and obviously yeah. you introduce mm -hmm. step families that's a whole different situation mm -hmm. so i have another yeah. nuanced question i would love for you all to share your perspective on somebody may be listening to this and be like all right you know i have a child and i'm not afraid to share that with somebody i'm actually confident but on the flip side i'm grown do i need to tell the baby mother or the baby father do i need to tell them yeah. that i'm dating yeah. what should that look like yeah we that's, covered that too yeah <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah that's uh, a good one no you know and just speaking from our situation um i didn't even share that with my co-parent until um gosh, I mean, it was months in. it was established. We were dating and, and Michael, um, I think Michael had, had met Scott had mm. just met him. And I was like, Hey, I just want to let you know, you know, um, cause we were actually doing a drop off. It was a transition day where, uh, my son was going with his dad and his stepmom. And I was like, Hey, I really would love for you to meet Scott. You know, we've been dating for X amount of time, you know, just introducing Michael. Um, and so again, I think it's just using that discernment, um, you know, and maybe some people may feel like they need to talk if they have a really good relationship with their co-parent, you know, maybe it's something that they talk to them about before they introduce, you know, I know from the other side, you know, I met, um, Michael's stepmom um, one day at a, a baseball game. It was one of Michael's baseball games. And his dad was like, Hey, I'm bringing this girl that I'm dating. Would really like for you to meet her. I was like, okay. And so, um, 
you know, I, I think everybody's approach can be different. But again, I think it would be a good idea for you and the person that you're dating to be united in that. And it's not some like wishy-washy, like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I think, I think I, I want to continue today. I mean, I think it would be one of those things that you really need to be firm and planted in this relationship of, Hey, we are really looking to move this towards engagement or we're on that path to marriage um, before you go that route. Because when you introduce another person into that co-parenting relationship, and then if you're allowing them to have, start having a say in things, which I, I could go a whole nother, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. you know, it, you, it's really delicate and you have to be really, really careful with that. Um so yeah, I know for us, it was after we had established like, hey, we're on the path to engagement, like this is going on. And, and I remember actually calling the day after we got engaged and telling my ex-spouse, hey, you know, Scott proposed, we're planning to get married, just wanted to let you know. And he congratulated me, like, you know, we had a good enough uh, relationship at that time. Um, so yeah, I think it's just using discernment, but making sure that the person that you are dating, that you guys are, you're in a good place. And there's a firm foundation there of, Hey, this is the direction that we're going. And I just want to let you know that this person is involved. Um, and, um, you know, yeah. Yeah. I, I think the only thing I would add to that is, you know, don't rush to check the boxes. Mm. You know, I think in, in single parent mentality, it's like, okay, I met someone. I want them to meet the child as soon as possible. Then I got to introduce them to my parents. And then I got to, you know, let the process develop yeah. because, you know, step parenting or people who are moving into that step parent role, if, especially if they don't have kids, they're going to have a lot of emotions that are going to go back and forth. Mm. You know, it, it takes a little while to kind of settle into that groove um, because you're not only evaluating your own relationship, you're, you're, you're evaluating the relationship that now you have with that child right. and you're evaluating the relationship that they have with their ex-spouse. So there's a lot of relationships to navigate there to go, okay, where, where am I fitting in? And do I feel comfortable in this situation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that y'all are able to give the two different perspectives of like a person who has a child coming into a relationship and then someone who's, okay, I don't have any children on my own, but I'm developing in a relationship with this child because kids are not always the easiest to <laughs> get along with or trust or them trust you and all of those different things. Um, mm. But Vanessa, one thing I wanted to call out that you said for those listening is there is an element of, um, we always say here, Tim and I would say we're team no surprises. So it sounds like even with your co-parent, you're like, I'm telling you that I just got engaged. I'm telling you mm -hmm. there's somebody special in my life. And something, and I think that it just causes so much more drama when it's like, Michael told me that you were with some guy and mm -hmm. who is that guy? And it always yeah. it yeah. starts off things on a bad track of like, oh, I don't want my son around some man. Yeah. It's like, no, I'm going to be respectful. And I think that that's important, no matter what your relationship is like with a co-parent, um, whether yeah. like how healthy it is, it's like, well, at the end of the day, I'm going to do what the best that I can do, regardless of if this person is deserving or if they did the same thing for me or whatever the case yeah. is. So I think that that's um, important for those of you who are listening, who are like, well, my child's father or, or mother is not like, they're not a respectful person, but it's like, okay, mm -hmm. well, you do what you can do and let the Lord do yeah. the rest um, and kind of like wash your hands clean of it. Cause it can be really yeah. tough, especially if it's maybe not your first time dating uh, post yeah. that relationship or it's just a lot of things, especially if there's distance involved and all that. So I think that that's such a good tip that you gave. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. So I want to get practical here um, for our listeners because we talked about kids and how they can, it can be tough. <laughs> I was, like I said, I was a kid and I remember. Wait, you know, did you tell the story? What is the story? The, I remember Tim's stepmom told me when she first met him that he, she, well, how old were you? When I met her, like yeah. eight, nine, ten. She, he, like one of the first things he said to her was like, I want my mom and dad to get back together. She was like, off the bat, he was like, I don't like you. And she was like, <laughs> <"What?"> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a lot. Unfortunately, <laughs> on both sides, my stepmom and stepdad, there's stories that they say I said at that time that I have no recollection of, and that just goes yeah. to show you, you got to be mindful of how much you are taking in what the kids are saying because a lot of that stuff they're it's still emotion. broken and they're yeah. still hurt, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So all that to say, when we're talking about kids, how should how do you all recommend couples introducing the kid 
to their partner that they're dating. And let's go by stages because I'm assuming it's different at each stage. So let's say if it's a toddler or that baby stage, like how would you all recommend someone introducing the child in that situation? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So going by stages, I, I think obviously toddlers, little, little, little bitty kids. Um, and I'm just kind of putting this in, in my frame, like how I would react to this. I think, you know, kids are great, especially when they're toddlers. They don't really do a lot. They don't talk. Uh, I'm just saying, I mean, unless they're yours, I mean, it makes it really hard. You're like, oh, that's, that's a cute kid. Um, <laughs> you really have a relationship with them. You know, they're, you're not having a dialogue. Um, so I think at a certain point, you know, um, whenever you are comfortable in that, in that, in that, in that relationship, that can happen. I, I think obviously as you move to a little bit older, it's when it becomes a little bit more precarious of like, okay, what does that look like? Um, and how that looks. I think the one thing that we always talk about and we always, you know, give as, as practical advice is remember that kids spell love uh, with T I M E yeah. time and having fun. Mm -hmm. So it really should be, you know, that, that prototypical, that Chuck E. Cheese first date is not a bad idea. Because, yeah. Because kids do bond by having fun. They do bond by being in, in, in environments where they have one-on-one -on -one communication and one-on-one -on -one time with that new parent. Mm -hmm. um, and just a funny story that I'll, I'll tell you real quick. One of the first times that, that Vanessa ever left Michael alone with me, like, she was like, Hey, I got to go into the store. We were engaged. We were engaged. This, we were engaged, oh, engaged yeah. at this point. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and then, you know, she comes back a few hours later and she walks in the door and, and, and Michael is like seven or eight at this point. Yes. He's seven, seven or eight. He was seven. He was seven. And we're sitting there, uh, in the living room, uh, playing call of duty, um, which I didn't know at the time was not <laughs> appropriate for a seven-year-old. Um, <laughs> but to me, and especially to him, we were having a great time together. Um, so that just goes to show you that, you know, first of all, uh, when you're becoming a parent, you gotta, you need to get caught up to speed on what's parenting 101. Yeah, parenting <laughs> 101. Uh, and then the other side of it is, is, you know, especially, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm big on being a step parent to a boy. That's what I know, but they, they want to have fun and yeah. they want to get, they want to have a good time together. Yeah, I think, you know, when, when we first made that introduction with Michael, we actually went swimming and then we went to the zoo. And so it was, um, you know, it was something where we could all have fun together. The, the focus was on Michael and, you know, mm -hmm. trying to make sure that he was having a good time, but inserting that dialogue and not making it too stiff or like awkward, um, you know, but yeah. And with younger kids too, you know, the same thing, you know, kids love to do something where you're coming into their world maybe yeah. it's you know playing basketball or football a video game or mm -hmm. they're really creative in like arts things like that it's it's what do the kids enjoy and you stepping into their world um and and you know asking them about those things or you know just um jumping in on whatever it is that they love to do and i think for them that mm -hmm. um it, it makes them feel import, important. Yeah. Um, I think it can also make them feel like they have a voice in it as well. I remember when I met my stepdad and my stepsister for the first time, we all went to lunch together and it was awkward. I'm like, I just want to eat my bean and cheese taco and mm -hmm. I'm having to talk to these people I don't know, you know? Well, and, and you bring up something really important and I'll, I'll touch this because we're, we've been kind of approaching it like one person has a child and the other one doesn't. But if you both have children, this is this is what I would suggest is you get together and you figure out where the two children collide. What do they yeah. both enjoy doing? What do they all enjoy doing? Because that first meeting, you know, they could be different ages. And, and in, in little kid world, there's a big difference between a seven and a nine year old. Right. There's a big difference between a five and a seven year old. So try to find that cohesive like, OK, all of our kids enjoy doing this. And that's what we're going to go do. Because again, they will bond that way and it'll be a great first experience for them. Yeah, that's great. Now, is there any difference for a teen? I know there is a difference, but is there any thing that comes to mind? Maybe one thing that you should do differently for teenagers, that interaction? Yeah, I, I, again, whether it, the thing about blended families that's so unique is that the, the amount of differences is just, the number is just too large. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. depending on the age of the teenager, if they're boys or if they're girls, uh, again, all of those things collide around. And, and let's be honest, teenagers today are not great at socializing. Um, <laughs> they're actually uh, the anti of socialization unless 
uh, it's through electronics. So I think, again, doing something that is interesting and fun for them. Um, and then again, with teenagers, I mean, they're really looking back, back at their parents too, at that point, you know, we have a 17 year old now, and he looks at us and says, do mom and dad get along? Are they, are they in love? And they want to see that because that makes them feel secure in what they're doing. Um, so again, I don't think there's a lot of difference. Just have a mm -hmm. good time and have yeah. fun together. Yeah. I mean, I would think, you know, with teenagers, I, I know a big thing, it's like going to Starbucks or, you know, if, if they love sports, like going to a, you know, an NFL game or something like that. We live in Dallas. So the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> game, something like that, you know, and that can look different for adult children as well. We have a lot of blended families. Mm -hmm. They get married and, and they're trying to bring adult children in who, you know, it, it, it may not go well. And so maybe it's having a dinner, you know, um, things that, you know, as you age, you know, you have those things, your, you know, your likes and your hobbies and things like that change. And so maybe it's every, you know, we go on a hike together as a family or we're going fishing, things like that. Um, I think finding something that, um, you know, everybody can find in, in, in creating a cohesive environment um, where everybody just feels um, secure and where they feel um, comfortable. Yeah. And let me uh, the one last thing in here. Don't be afraid to laugh. This yeah. is a very serious topic yeah. and people are really scared about it. But remember, you know what? Just laugh at yourself. Laugh at what's going on. Enjoy it. Yeah. Um, there's a lot more times in life that you can be serious. Uh, so take the advice from your kids and have fun. Yeah. Enjoy it. Um, try to figure out a way to find some 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 laughter in that. That's so good. I feel like what y'all were saying is basically be consistent. Like no matter the age or the gender or the stage, it's like, all right, we're going to try this. If that doesn't work. We'll try something else. But like being consistent with it, realizing like, I understand you're not really into this because you're 12 and you want to be playing video games, but you know, this is going to happen and we're going to be in the process of it. And um, yeah. kind of flowing into our next question is more about confidence. And Scott, this, I feel like this is something you can really touch on as you were the one coming in uh, without a child. But somebody asked, um, someone who I just dating, who I just started dating has a child. I like him, but I'm nervous about the complexity of the situation and not sure if I'm ready to be a step parent when it comes to that. How do I look at this opportunity of dating this person as um, an opportunity instead of an obstacle because we do know some people are like oh I don't want to date anybody with a child and they rule somebody yeah. out when the reality is like that may be who God wants you to be with well you know what and and, and I'm probably going to drop probably the the one of the most important things that I can think of right now is you have to be patient in this process because again you know we said this at the at the beginning of the, of the podcast is not every dating relationship works mm -hmm. but not every first interactions with kids means that's the way it's always going to be. Mm -hmm. so, so, you know, you may, you may find that it, that it could be a rocky situation when you start. And that's why, you know, we, we talk about this a lot in our ministry, you know, the priorities of a healthy marriage are not that far different from the priorities of a healthy dating relationship. Yeah. So one having Christ at the, at the top center. So being prayerful about what you're doing, who you're dating, how that relationship is going, keeping your focus with moving closer to your relationship with Christ and then keeping your relationship second. How are you and th that person getting along? Are y'all progressing and, and are you doing the things that you should be doing in a dating relationship, which does not, does not separate the intimacy that you can have spiritually together. You can pray together. You can go to church together. These are the things that are exclusive in a dating relationship that are really healthy and good. And then looking at the children as that kind of third priority, but understand that you may not be very popular when you get there. <laughs> I had that situation where, you know, I knew that Michael would prefer his parents get back together. So yeah. There were times that, that that was rocky and that did not feel good to me. Being a step parent, instant gratification comes and goes really quick. Wow. You will get it at first because you are fun. And then you will not get it for a long time because then you are the authority figure who stands in the way between their biological parents. Wow. So being patient and understanding that kids develop, your relationship develops. And as a focus, you're focused on, and I tell people all the time, there are going to be step parents. Your focus is on loving their parent. So That's good. what the focus is. You don't know everything. You don't know how to do everything, but you can love their parent immensely 
and intensely and let the rest kind of go and just let it work out. I love yeah. that. I would call it, we call it the three P. So, and we say prayer, patience, and persistence. And this can be in the pursuit of like your marriage and your blended family. We say it a lot with um, step-parent and step-child relationships. And it's just, you want to be prayerful in that process. Just like Scott talked about, be prayerful over the children, be prayerful over your relationship, um, being patient in that process. You know, um, we, you know, we always talk about your, you sow and you sow and you sow and you sow as a step parent, but that harvest oftentimes doesn't come until they're out of the house or later on. I know for me growing up, um, mm -hmm. my stepdad, he became my best friend when I was in college and yeah. I called him more than I called my mom, but that was way later on in life. Um, but being, but continuously being persistent in the pursuit. I remember my stepdad just all consistently pursuing me, like yeah. just you know, Vanessa, how are you like, Hey, let me take you out to dinner. You know, regardless of the pushback that I gave him, he was so, um, persistent in his pursuit of me. Um, and so I would just say, if you're a step parent, I just want to encourage you don't, um, if you're in that season where you're getting that pushback as a kiddo, man, don't ever underestimate the value or the influence that you have on your stepchildren. I came to know Christ because of my stepdad and so did my mom. And that changed our whole legacy. All of our children, um, have accepted Jesus and they wow. have all been baptized and you never underestimate your influence that you have on your stepchildren, because that can be an, an a heavenly re, a, a just eternal reward that you may not even see our side. Right. Wow. Um, but um, yeah, I just want to encourage that because I know step parents have a really hard time with that. Yeah. yeah. That's so good. And I just want to come in as the third piggyback and say, I a thousand percent agree from perspective. I was that kid that <laughs> wanted my step parent and parent to get divorced, listening when they have an argument. Yeah, say that. Yeah, oh come on. God. Like, so, you know, kids are petty. I didn't know Jesus praise God. I mean, the majority. <laughs> but, yeah. So you, I was that kid, but I can literally say now that I'm so grateful for both of my step parents. My life would not be the same without yeah. them. The love is stronger than ever. And I'm very fortunate that my step parents loved me as if I was their own child. Yeah. And true. that truly helped. And what I'll say is that it's a constant reminder of Romans 8:28. All things work together for the good. Like I can look what we're doing today, helping people is because of the broken family I came out of that led to a redeemed family that you all talk about that blessed me because I have four parents who love me, who care for me who put their dna into me that i would not have been able to get if i just had to so yeah a thousand percent agree with that yeah i love it because so we even think about and remember how jesus was in a blended family you know his mm -hmm. earthly father who was not his mm -hmm. biological father raised him trained him up and like i think that so many times it's very easy for the enemy to make us think like oh there's something wrong with this family yeah. this family cannot be like as full as a, a, a biological family because mm -hmm. you know because of the, the dna and that's just really not true it's not bible mm -hmm. so i love yeah. that um you all are infusing that truth and that hope and the encouragement that you gave um to anybody who is a step parent who mm -hmm. is considering it like it doesn't need to be a stopping point for you in the dating process like mm -hmm. sure maybe harder than another process but no matter what <laughs> marriage is hard <laughs> so you're not yeah. going to escape any you're not you're not getting off free mm. if, you, if you marry somebody who doesn't have a kid um yeah. or you do yeah. so it's just if you love that person and it's called, like you said if you want to love them like love them that's all that's called of you you're not you're not yeah. charged to make the kid like you that's not yeah. in your your yeah. responsibility absolutely you love that yeah this has been so good yeah uh, is there any final thought that you want to share with our audience that you want them to take home um or where can they connect with you if they were like, man, I need to get more of this. How can they reach you? You can do both if you want, uh, or just let them know how to connect with you. Yeah. Well, I, I want to leave one last thought, you know, I have one too. okay. So <laughs> yeah. Anytime we do a podcast and I, I always think about who's the person listening to this podcast and, and what do they need to be encouraged? If, if you are a single parent in this podcast and, and, and obviously Vanessa can speak to this personally, but I will speak to it from the other side. I will say this to you. Number one, God sees you and he loves you so much mm -hmm. and he is preparing something for you. Mm -hmm. He yeah. is preparing something in, immensely great. Vanessa prayed for me years before I ever met her. Wow. And I'm so glad that she did because I would not be who I am today without that. So God is preparing something for you. He is, he loves your child. He, he wants something incredible for your child or your children and just stay in tune to him. 
you know, if you don't have community, find a great church, find great single parents, single other people, family. I mean, just find people who are going to pour into you. Mm-hmm. But he loves you and he's he is for you and he's for your family and he's going to prepare something amazing for your family. Mm-hmm. That's what I would want to say. Yeah, well, that's good. And you made me forget what I was going to say. <laughs> it, was so, it was good. It was something about like, I was going to say like putting putting your spouse for your relationship for your. Yeah. Well, oh, oh, no, no. This was it. I remember, guys. OK, so she does that from time to time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, well, the one of the things that we say, so if you're, you know, um. If you're, if you're dating and and you're a single parent and you're, you know, you're, you're dating and you're going to blend, you know, one of the things that we say, if a divorce or a separation of, you know, from your spouse, you know, your children's biological parents is what hurt your children, a healthy God fearing relationship or marriage is what can heal them. And so going back to what Scott said about, um, loving the parent, the best, like he, Scott knows that when he loves me the best that that he can with everything in him and Michael is seeing that he's getting a glimpse of Jesus and Jesus loving his bride and the church and the body and the, you know, and so, um, and that's one of the best gifts that we can give them. So if you're in that dating season and you're, you're dating someone with a kid or even vice versa, just, um, just that putting that relationship and a lot of people don't understand that you guys, but it is biblical. It is putting your spouse above your children. And that's probably one of the number one things we see with people who Mm -hmm. blend and have issues is they continue to put their children above their spouse. And that's, it doesn't work. We do a lot of teaching on that, but um, go on about that. But just wanted to say that, but yeah, where are you guys, where everyone can find us. So blindakinafamilies.com it's blindakinafamilies on all the social media sites and um, podcast platforms. And so that you, yeah. Just Blending Kingdom Families. You'll find it. <laughs> Love that. Thank you both so much. Yeah, this think, yeah. is one of our favorite episodes. We know it's going to help so many people. Uh, we're excited oh, yeah. for the healing that's going to come from this, for sure. This has been another episode of the W Podcast. We'll see you next week, fam. Bye. Take care. Thanks for watching this video. To get more Christian relationship advice, subscribe to our channel. And make sure you check out our other videos as well.